All right, I guess we'll get started. Um, this talk's on Tumbleweed Snapshots. Uh, so I'd like to get started. Uh, curious who's actually heard of Tumbleweed Snapshots before? Anyone? All right, and uh, who's using it currently? All right, so hopefully I can convince some of you to uh, some more users. Um, so to start off, I have a video I produced um, several months back. I don't know if any of you have seen it, but I think it does a fairly good job of introducing the topic. So go ahead and play that. Building atop Tumbleweed. Introducing Tumbleweed Snapshots. <laughs> Before talking about Tumbleweed Snapshots, it is helpful to first compare the differences between Leap, a fixed release, and Tumbleweed, a rolling release. Leap is released as a frozen set of packages in a repository. Those packages receive updates via another repository, but the main system remains unchanged. A user has a copy of the packages installed on their machine. Along comes a new version of Leap, which updates the base system and lots of packages. The user may then perform a distribution upgrade to the new version. Tumbleweed differs from Leap in that the base system and packages are constantly changing within the same repository. The user then performs distribution upgrades each time the repository is updated. Tumbleweed Snapshots provides a separate repository for each snapshot of Tumbleweed. Users thus have a remote repository that matches their installed system. Unlike the single repository approach, where installing a new package may come from a newer snapshot and not fit into the installed system, with snapshot repositories, new packages are ensured to fit properly. This provides the benefits of bleeding-edge software when you need it, without the hassle of updating just to install new software. In effect, Tumbleweed Snapshots acts like lots of mini fixed releases so you can choose when to update. This also works well with snapper rollbacks as new software can still be installed while you wait for upstream fixes. Extending on this, a website and data source will be provided to aid users in determining what snapshots to avoid due to problems that would affect them. To get started, install Tumbleweed CLI and run Tumbleweed init. See the video description for links containing more details. All right. So possibly the uh, first question that needs to be answered is uh, why not just always update? Um, as I imagine, that's what most people do currently. Um, so there's two main reasons for not uh, updating. The first one is disruption. So um, obviously, it can take a fair amount of time to update and install and all that sort of stuff if all you actually want is to install some missing library or something so you can complete your work. or an application, and um, being stuck. So obviously there are problems that occur in Tumbleweed that affect some users more than others. Um, we've had uh, various kernel driver issues that would cause uh, black and white screens, things like that that you want to avoid. So in situations where you've already updated, encountered those problems and rolled back, or have read the mailing list and are aware of them, um, you may not want to update. But this leaves you in kind of a precarious situation, as we'll look at here in the next slide. So the impact of updating means that uh, you can't always install new software um, because it won't fit in. So if a new compiler just hit Tumbleweed the next day after you update it, you may have a lot of issues if you try to install new libraries. Um, and depending on how the dependencies are set up, um, they may just install and cause things to crash. So for example, just a simplified example here, if you wanted to install the debug info for Mesa and it got updated the next day after you had updated. Obviously, it wouldn't uh, fit in. And what you really want is the debug info that was compiled for the Mesa that's running on your system. So let's take a look at how um, Tumbleweed Snapshots accomplishes this. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the client side command line. So just to get everyone familiar with what it's doing when you initialize, so everyone's hopefully comfortable to perhaps try it themselves. When you run init, it goes ahead. It only modifies the um, main OSS and non-OSS repositories from Tumbleweed. Um, the rest of the repositories are obviously not snapshotted. Um, but it goes ahead and backs them up for you. So by backing them up, places them in the um, repos directory, makes a little hidden one called previous. So they're there if you need them. And it also goes ahead and introduces the snapshot version into the URL, which we'll talk about later. And this allows you, this basically makes your um, re repository URLs be able to point to different snapshots easily. So just to be clear, you can undo the initialization. So you can go backwards. It will simply put them back. So you're exactly back into the state you were before you initialize. So there should be not too much trouble if you uh, mess up. 
What's actually happening when you run the init um, is it modifies the repository file to introduce that snapper version variable, which zipper supports. Um, so basically there's a vars directory with the, uh, with a file of the same name, snapshot version, would have the contents, as you see there, of a particular tumbleweed snapshot, which then, when assembled, the URL ends up pointing to a remote repository. So if you want to change that to point to a newer snapshot, you simply change the um, value in the snapshot version file, and your URL ends up pointing to a newer snapshot. So to ease that, the command line tool simply allows you to execute the switch command and specify whatever version you want to switch to, and simply modifies the contents of that file, which effectively changes which repository you're pointing at. So let's look at a uh, typical scenario of um, updating. So since the since um, the actual repositories are pointing to a fixed um, version of Tumbleweed, just running near normal refresh and dump won't work. You need to actually change which um, snapshot you're pointing at. So the command line is designed similar to Git, where you basically have a an overview status which tells you the latest snapshot that's available um, on the remote end, the one that you're currently targeting, and the one that's installed. So if you run update here, we can see that we were running the 530 snapshot, and the latest one is 602. So update automatically just picks the latest one, and it which and which is equivalent to running switch with install. So basically, switch normally just changes the um, the value, the snapshot that you're pointing at. So install simply triggers refresh and dump to run afterwards, just to simplify things. Um, also available through the command line uh, is the history. So you can see here's the uh, list just for context of the snapshots that would have been available on the remote end. And since we just updated, you can see that in our history we were on 530 before and we updated to 602. The fact that it keeps this history makes it easy. Obviously if you're using Snapper, you can simply roll back and all the, f the configuration files will have rolled back as well. Um, but if you're not or you're doing something manual, you can use this. If you run Tumbleweed Revert, uh, it will simply look in that history file and go back to the previous one, which again is equivalent to you manually selecting which snapshot you want to go to and running switch. So now let's take a look at how the remote snapshots are um, created, so you get an idea what's there. So there were several iterations of this. Um, the first one was basically trying to create a whole bunch of copies of the repositories with sim links for the files in common. The idea behind this was simply to allow mirrors in the future to easily be able to get their own copy. Um, was quickly replaced with using hard links, which the mirrors should be able to handle with rsync, no problem. And after waiting quite a while, without uh, getting official hosting, ended up deciding to host it myself. Uh, so I used Amazon S3 to actually host all the files, which required a slightly different approach since they don't support hard links, since it's not actually a real file system. So we'll talk about what that structure looks like. So the um, S3 structure basically has directories for each one of the snapshots and a shared directory where all the actual RPMs are placed and then a uh, latest and list file which that command line tool will access so you know which ones are available. Uh, the structure within an individual snapshot basically contains the most important piece is the repo data, but there's some other files in there. Um, so the repo data, if you're not familiar, is the bit that um, Zipper will request when you run refresh to know what packages are actually available. And then there's some other files that I just generate, the uh, disk file, which gives me a rough idea of how much that snapshot's using, and the uh, RPM list and unique list, which we'll talk about more later. The shared directory then is what contains all the RPMs. So basically, any time a, a snapshot introduces new RPMs, they're all placed in one big shared directory. And there are redirects used, and this is basically just avoiding the fact that you can't use hard links or any kind of sim links on S3. So we basically accomplish the same thing by using redirects. So the current snapshot is always pointed to the live mirrors. Um, and then the, any, any older snapshots um, basically point to the shared directory for RPMs and the repo data is served out of the uh, directory itself. So to visualize it another way, basically have a giant shared directory with all the RPMs from all the snapshots in it. And then we basically create virtual repositories on top of that by basically stacking the repo data with the redirects on top of the shared directory. So we can effectively serve multiple snapshots with the same set of shared RPMs. So to get another idea of what that looks like when you're making a request, let's imagine we are trying to install the foo package for this, the 602 snapshot, that would generate a git request for the 602 snapshot. 
of that RPM, which would end up being redirected to the shared repository, the shared directory for the same file. So if we were running a older snapshot and we did the same thing, we would get a request for that snapshot and it would be rejected to the same place. So basically it just saves us the hassle or the space of having to store um, loads of the same thing. So how this is accomplished, um, basically you run rsync against the, uh, the active snapshot that's published on the uh, official mirrors, get a list of all the files that are in that snapshot. We look at the previous snapshot that we have on uh, S3 and we have the list of all the RPMs that, uh, contained within, do a diff of those, we determine what unique RPMs were introduced in the uh, latest snapshot. And from there we can take those two pieces of information and we can uh, rsync all the files to whatever machine is performing the snapshot and then upload them all to Amazon shared directory and then we basically copy the repo data and a few other things but simplified there to the um, particular snapshot directory. And to delete, basically do the exact opposite. So if we want to delete the older snapshot that we're working with there, we have the file list both available on S3, do uh, basically a unique check to look for whatever was unique in the older one um, when compared to the newer one, remove those from the shared directory, and then delete the actual repo data directory. So the uh, limitations of hosting on S3 right now is uh, they have a hard limit of 50 static website redirects and they do not support wildcards so that effectively limits us to 50 snapshots. So that's what I've been hosting for the last um, six months or so. So how well does this approach work for keeping the size down? You can see here a graph of the uh, S3 storage consumption over the last few months. Um, the big spike in the middle was introduction of um, cubic packages into factory which rebuild every single time and contain basic copies of lots of RPMs, so they're not terribly useful for us. So after removing them, you can see the flat line at the end. So we're basically running at about 300 gigabytes for 50 snapshots, which isn't too bad. So to analyze that a bit more, a full snapshot of the OSS and non-OSS repositories is roughly 70 gigs. The repo um, data directory and all the other files that are in there is around 860 megabytes. Um, and the typical shared usage between snapshots, which basically gives you a rough idea of how much churn there actually is in Tumbleweed, is anywhere from 1 to 15 gigs, with the average being right around 5 gigabytes. So that's basically the number of unique RPMs produced in each Tumbleweed snapshot. So 50 snapshots ends up using, like I said, around 305 gigs, which the raw would have been 3.5 three, three terabytes. So we're using roughly 9% of the size, so all the uh, redirecting and all that fun muck saving us a bunch of storage space. So now let's review from the user perspective um, some of the tools that I've added basically to help you choose snapshots since you have a lot more flexibility on when you update and what you update to now. Um, this is also useful if you're not going to use the um, Tumbleweed snapshots just to keep, in, keep track of what's actually going on in factory and Tumbleweed. Um, so basically the two main things is a score is introduced for each one of the snapshots. There's two main parts of the score, both a feedback score, which basically comes from looking at the factory mailing list and possibly expand it in the future, but Bugzilla as well, try to get an idea of how many problems and if there are problems with the snapshot that people are facing. And that's combined with a predictive score, which basically looks at particular package versions and where they are in their release cycle or whether or not the package turn itself was huge, which could mean lots of things were recompiled, things like that that have caused issues in the fact or in the past. Um, so basically the idea is that these snapshots kind of sit for a week before they're actually given a actual stability rating um, with the intent being to allow for feedback from users. So obviously there would be two groups with that. Um, people that probably aren't running the snapshots would be providing that immediate feedback and then those that are actually waiting to update. So again, as I mentioned, the two main feedback sources are from the factory mailing list. So any, basically the entire um, mailing lists are downloaded and threaded. So anything that's a response to the release announcement is um, considered a considered feedback and the any threads referencing with the subject referencing the uh, a particular tumbleweed snapshot. Um, I was hoping to get more detail out of Bugzilla, but the way that it's structured um, without a bit more work can't really get too much useful information. So that uh, isn't weighed very heavily. The idea behind the predictive score is basically for users that, uh, so for example, my, my parents, I uh, have my mother running Tumbleweed 
and I don't want to have to like babysit when she updates and things like that. So the idea with this being that the predictive score is overly cautious, basically to avoid anything that has caused issues in the past, so that hopefully someone like that could simply update to the utmost stable version of Tumbleweed, and they may skip 20 or 30 snapshots in between until that happens. So as I mentioned, some of the factors that play into that are like initial versions of a kernel or Mesa, th things that we've seen cause like white screens for users, fun stuff like that. Or if the compiler changes, or like I said, there's a large turn in just um, well, packages change in one snapshot. So some ideas for the future. Um, the current site's kind of rough, but basically splitting out the scores so that uh, people that aren't care concerned about the predictive scores, they really just want to know about feedback, can more easily separate the two and indicates a lot of the factors that are going into those two scores. So again, things that don't affect certain people, they can ignore and uh, possibly just condense the site itself, which we'll take a look at in a second and get it um, possibly officially part of OpenSUSE.org. Um, some other ideas, like I mentioned, is integrating into the command line so that basically you could specify when you run tumbleweed update, hey, I only want snapshots that are really stable or I don't really care, um, things like that. And then possibly, as was suggested to me by someone, the uh, zipper plugin or something like that, which could basically filter out issues that don't affect you. So for example, a lot of times when a new kernel is introduced, the uh, NVIDIA drivers, proprietary drivers typically have issues with that and a bunch of people will complain. That snapshot will then be very negatively scored even though for people not using the NVIDIA proprietary driver, you obviously don't care at all. So being able to filter those things out would be um, some future steps. All the data that the site ingests and uh, uh, processes is all available in YAML files if you want to do something else with it. Um, and it's explained and documented on the site if you go look, which I'll have all the links at the end. So now let's take a look at the current view site as it stands. So for those of you who haven't seen it, this is what it looks like. So you basically get, it's a long page, it just lists out all the um, snapshots of Tumbleweed and provides you some information about them. You can also use the RSS feed. So if you'd like to be notified of new snapshots that way, which a lot of people seem to prefer over um, trying to find release announcements in the uh, factory list. Um, the graph expanded there that was on the, the left uh, basically tracks the stability scores that are, or the stability rating for each one of the snapshots over time so you can kind of see what the trends are. Is there a lot of issues in Tumbleweed that it's recovering from or uh, is it relatively stable right now? So this is, this these two particular dips here reference um, there were two pretty nasty issues that happened a few months ago in Tumbleweed that caused a lot of people to have white screens on boots. I think it was a shader cache in Mesa and some other things. So correctly, based on the feedback, it scored those releases very negatively um, and they took a little while to recover. So it works. Um, these are, this is one of those releases that was negatively scored. So you can see here, it has all the mails that were referenced from people complaining like plasma doesn't start or all these different things. So you'd be able to see that um, there, which those are basically just filtered versions of the uh, subjects from the mailing list. Um, this is just demonstrating the uh, yellow border around the 55, which simply indicates that I don't have an actual snapshot of that particular release of Tumbleweed. So if you're looking to install that, um, you would either have to have been running it live or um, wouldn't be able to get it. And that's indicated more when you click on the actual uh, releases themselves. So here's an overview of what that looks like if you look at one of those releases. Uh, so if we zoom in here, you can see at the bottom, it uh, indicates the versions of some of the kind of primary system components and it bolds them when they change. So you can kind of get an overview of what version these snapshots are running. So again, if you're trying to avoid particular um, versions that cause issues on your system, you can go back and look in the last 10 snapshots or whatever you need to do and figure out where it was that it was changed and update just before it. There's links at the bottom there to the uh, now mailing, mailing list announcement and the full list of um, packages so you can control F and find whatever you're interested in finding the version for. And at the bottom there, it provides you with the uh, tumbleweed switch uh, command to install this particular snapshot. And like I mentioned before, if there was a yellow border around it, you'll get a little message at the bottom that says, I don't have a snapshot of this particular release, so you can't install it, but you can uh, see all the feedback for it. So next question, uh, is anyone else, is anyone actually using it? So based on the uh, statistics I get from Amazon, there's roughly 6,000 hits per day. I obviously don't know how many of those are unique hits. Um, based on looking at the um, refreshes of repo metadata and the list page, I'd say it's somewhere just south of 1,000 users, unless people are literally just refreshing over and over and over again. Um, I'd like to be able to do the same thing that download.opensusa.org does, which is 
Uh, Zipper sends them an extra header, which basically lets you know, lets you differentiate between machines. But uh, that'd be something we could do once it's once we uh, get official hosting. Um, just a quick breakdown of countries that are using it. If anyone's curious, Germany at the top there. So now you may ask, what are the downsides from using tumbleweed snapshots? As far as as far as I can reason, there aren't any. Um, so basically, you should all uh, install the CLI tool and run tumbleweed init. So one thing to remember after you do that is that updating is a bit different. So you can either use the all-in-one tumbleweed update command, which runs basically everything you see on the right, which runs switch and then runs a refresh and dump for you, which you can do yourself obviously if you want. Um, some other things to note, if you're using Pac-Man repository or develop projects or things like that, those are not snapshotted. So if you decide you want to update to like a month old snapshot of tumbleweed and you have Pac-Man and you're dumping at the same time, you may have issues. Um, so generally, generally if you are using Pac-Man, basically you need to update to a relatively recent um, snapshot if you're actually going to update that as well. Um, as I mentioned, there is no response in the mailing list, but setting up snapshotting for something like that should be relatively simple if we wanted to do so. Um, even easier if it was built into OBS, which could be something to look at. The uh, resources mentioned um, in the slides here are all based around my hosting, uh, tumbleweed.boomitar.com. Um, so the actual snapshots themselves are basically mirroring the download.opensusa style, so they're all at download.that. Uh, the review site that you saw there is right there, and the main page is a dashboard that's been around for a long time. If you're curious, it kind of shows you what's upcoming, shows you what's in the develop projects for Tumbleweed. And uh, I write stuff at Release Tools, it's a blog, so there's information about a lot of these changes. But that's all I got, so I don't know if anyone has any questions or comments about uh, the snapshots. Do you want to do, do mic or? Did I understand right that um, if I want to use it, I need to reserve around 350 GB on a machine? No. So the, the 300 gigs is what I'm paying for on S3. <laughs> so okay, basically, that's, that's, it operates exactly the same as running Tumbleweed normally from your perspective. So okay. you'll have whatever your repository caches is and the actual packages themselves, but uh, nothing else. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Jimmy, I think this is an excellent idea. Two questions. Once I've got it installed, if I want to update, if I want to patch, I just run zippered up just as, just as I usually do with Tumbleweed. Is right. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Until so I want to. Basically, like I said, it's, so the actual Tumbleweed repositories themselves will be fixed if you run DUP, but any of the other repositories like the uh, Tumbleweed update repo or things like that, when you run DUP will obviously update. Okay, so as far as Pac-Man goes, I'm kind of on my own with that one. Yeah, so generally how I've been using it, like I said, is unless there's huge changes related to like FFmpeg or things like that in Tumbleweed, generally if you pick a release from the last like 14 days or so, you're usually okay, but hopefully DUP will complain heavily if you're not, so, okay. or you can go back. And right now, when I, when I just did it now, I added the two repositories that I added were Boomba Tower. You talked about getting official hosting. Again, I think this is a great idea. Do you have any idea of when you're likely to get that official hosting? Or is that <laughs> That's a, a controversial question. Yeah, so hopefully that'll happen soon. I think there's a movement there, but uh, we'll see. Um, I also think it's a great idea. And I see a demand which I see related, which is um, for Leap that we have versions with a with a dot version, and then people are saying that you know one version of Leap is not that long supported. So I have in my mind an idea, and you can tell me that is applicable to use a similar approach to update to a Leap version. Therefore, of course, it wouldn't be like the snapshot, but one 
specific version of Leap, would it make sense? Uh, I'm not sure I fully understand what you're asking, but basically... Uh, okay, sorry. To um, ask a simple question, can we apply the same on Leap to say I only want to have whatever is the latest version of Leap or maybe the, the oldest version that is still supported or maybe the latest minus one version of Leap because I want to apply something similar. I do not want to, you know, be always on the most recent. I do not want to make this version switch manually. I want something like this Tumbleweed switch to be able to select that in an easy way. Yeah, okay. Well, it, from that perspective, I think you ought to be able to tweak the uh, tools to do the same thing. You could probably even use a variable for the uh, Leap version like I'm doing. If that's if that's your goal, um, I think that would that would work fine if you wanted to. I don't know if there's any more actual remote end you want to do, like snapshotting the updates repo or something like that. I don't know if that's what you're thinking about. Uh, well, I think on download OpenSUSE org, we of course we have multiple versions, and I think in the end the same approach could be applied there because right now it's like a full copy. Of, of the RPM packages and then repository, and I think the same way of maybe just efficient space storage could be applied there, even though I think it's not that big of an issue because, of course, you only have one version per year, so have a consistent set. Um, right. And another thing which is then maybe applicable to both ways even more is to have some kind of more intelligence to say, you know, I, do not, I, I don't care which snapshot, but really what I want is like, really the latest that would be like equivalent to real tumbleweed or the always minus one or the i don't know is there some kind of uh, threshold for the stability level which i can then select and say always pick up the next one if the stability level is higher than this or what you mentioned regarding the you know i do not run nvidia so please give me the latest one that is stable on non-nvidia or something like that yeah so th that's where i want to take it so basically the site itself and the uh, data source already rates them so that's after the week it will give them a i, I think i have a, like moderate stable and not and those are just basically based on my rating system so it's like 70 to 9 and 90 are the cutoff points there um so that's definitely what i envision is basically being able to set your your command line tool to basically say i only want to update to stable ones ignore everything else and just have it do that and so that would naturally wait based on my rating system a week to go by for each snapshot, so you'd probably be running N minus whatever that would be, roughly a day they're released, but not always, so you could be running a five day old snapshot. So just another thing to clarify, if you don't care about the stability rating and you still want to update to the latest version of, of Tumbleweed all the time, um, you can still use this even if you're basically updating every couple days or something like that. So you can still update to the, the latest snapshot and if you sit on it for a couple days then you'll be, you can still install things. So you can use it either way. Right, thanks. And just one minor question for clarification. You mentioned the use case of uh, installing the right debug in for matching my source package, but then you explained that only the OSS and non-SS repo are mirrored. So how does this... Yeah, so thing? you can't actually do that, obviously, but that's something... That was one of my original use cases, but that's just a bunch more space. So if we get official hosting and, you know, that's not a constraint, then, like I said, you could apply this to all the repositories. So I'm just limiting it for my own sake to the OSS and non-OSS ones, but... It still applies if you're, you know, installing Python libraries or who knows what's changed, things like that. But okay, thanks. Um, I think also it's a great idea. Is it possible to switch back to an older sm uh, snapshot? Yeah. Like so you can you can either use like I showed there the history that it just keeps on your own machine of snapshots and just run revert or you can just run switch and pick any version that I have on the remote end. So I've tried it a bunch of times in like a container and whatnot. So you can take a the current Docker container and you can install the CLI tool and just say I want to install something from two months ago. And again, that's going to depend on the packaging whether or not that works without issues. So sometimes when there's a ton of change, you can't actually go backwards easily because configs have been migrated, stuff like that. But generally, uh, if you're not going back too far or if there hasn't been too much change, it works really well. So like I said, the preferred setup is if you actually have like Snapper or something else where you can just straight up roll back to an old version and sit on it after you don't like it. But you can use this tool to go backwards, like I said, with varying degrees of success. Yeah, that was my second question. The, the, in case an update doesn't go too well, you would rather recommend to use Snapper to switch back to the right snapshot rather than 
switch to older snapshots of uh, tumbleweed repos. Yeah, so if you do snapper, then the, all the config files should roll, roll back as well. So basically, it should just be pointing at whatever snapshot you were on before in the remote end. So it should just work naturally. So if you have snapper, I think that's probably the cleanest way to do it. <laughs> Anybody else? All right. Well, thanks then for listening. <laughs>